Hey, 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 we're back, we're black. I'm blacker because of the sun from Jordan. We're brown <laughs> and this <young. laughs> Hey, Mandra. Hey, welcome back from your desert goddess <laughs> vacation. <laughs> Honestly, we had such a good, I had such a good time. Like it was, so remember I said that Bali was like um, neon. Like if I had to like give it like a color palette, then Jordan was pastels. It was just a soft, like the sand, the pinks, the blues, everything was just a soft, soft, soft coloring over the landscape. It was just, I mean, I got mm. to float in the Dead Sea which is like yeah. 30% um, salt water. So you get to float because I do not know how to float. I can swim-ish, but float, not me. Uh, but I got to float. Um, I even did like the mud mask because the Dead Sea, the mud is supposed to be so full of minerals. If you have sensitive skin, don't do that. You can't tell right now <laughs> because I'm extra chocolate. Yo, I am broken out like a 14-year-old. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. But still very epic. I, I will remember like that the next time I'm in the Dead Sea. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, I also got to like... um get rebaptized in the Jordan River. You know, that's where Jesus got baptized. So it was really Wow. So awesome. this was like a spiritual Yeah. Journey. I mean, I didn't think about it wow. that way, honestly. But until we went, I mean, it was certainly odd being on the Jordanian side and then seeing literally a few feet away the Israeli side. And mm. so in, in Jordan, they don't call Israel Israel. They call it occupied Palestine. So even just like that uh. energy was like, okay, you know, to, it's it's like, you know, the history come to life. You get to kind of see and see how people think and feel. And so that was interesting. I got to swim in the Red Sea, which was interesting. It's not really red. It's just that the water is so clear that there's a lot of red coral. So when the sun shines, sometimes it reflects back red. Um, we spent the night in a Bedouin um, camp in the desert. I rode a camel. I sent Mandy camel pictures. <laughs> I live for them. I want to post some of them. Do I have permission to get Amber to do some social posts? Oh, you can. You can. Because they're really great okay. pictures. I'm not going to lie. And then last but not least. <laughs> <Some> epic photos. <I, laughs> um, I got to go to Petra has always been on my list. You know, like to. So if, for those of you who are not familiar, Petra is like this city that has been carved out of a mountainside. So it's sandstone rock, which is red, but it has very beautiful coloring, like waves mm -hmm. of blues and greens into the sandstone. So this ancient culture, literally thousands of years ago, um, they wanted to protect their city. So on one side seems like a mountain if you're an invader, but on the other side of the mountain, they carved out this beautiful city, carved. So you get like... Um, five, six story buildings that are carved into rock. And it was just so epically beautiful. It just, it was breathtaking. And so, yeah, I just had such an amazing, amazing time. I went on a tour. Um, so yeah, I just, I just had such an amazing time. And it was, it's nice to be back home, you know, it was only a week, um, but it was just, I'm so glad I went because Jordan is not one of the places that people just say like, oh, I want to go to Jordan. Um, yeah. So Yes, but you had your um, own adventure. If you had to miss our big night, our, it felt <laughs> like you missed the prom. And I was like, fine. If you had to miss the prom, at least it was for to be baptized where Jesus was baptized. Okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you missed the webbies. Oh my god! No, first of all, you look so fly. I mean, you had to post the the post the pic. Mandy Thank was you. wearing yellow and was wearing it, honey. Okay, curls was popping, <laughs> face was done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went. It really felt like prom. It also felt like a coming out party that I haven't like for me just emerging from the pandemic mm -hmm. because I have not had a night like that. And husband came with me, Yay. as did our producer, Tanya. Hey, Tanya, girl, when I tell you. <laughs> so yesterday was officially like the six day or seven day mark from um, the event. And I was like, do I get to like do a little tap dance that I didn't get COVID? Because <laughs> let me tell you. We were, I mean, it was a huge event. I mean, mm. Meg the Stallion was there. Drew okay. Barrymore how was many, there. How, how many people do you think about? Lots of hundreds of people were there. Wow. Um, everyone had to be vaccinated and you had to show proof of vaccination. But you know, these mm -hmm. COVID rates are going up even in New York mm -hmm. City. Um, but I I just told myself, just pretend like you're from the Midwest today. COVID is a hoax <laughs> and we're just going to like live our lives and, and party. No and COVID. Damn, we partied. First of all, it was so it was so fun. And I mean, it's I get to rep Brown Ambition. So um, yeah. and my husband, oh, shout out to husband, because when I was doing the red carpet, first of all, for those who didn't see my IG story about this, oh, my God, I have not worn a heel in a solid two, three years. I don't know if I even wore them before. 
I had a baby. But anyway, so I had these really cute heels, um, a whole Luke that I put together. And uh, the red carpet line was about 40 minutes long. And there was like down these random like downpours of rain. So we were like huddling under these little tents and umbrellas. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me to take my heels off and just kind of barefoot it until I got to the red carpet. By the yeah. time it was my turn, I realized my right foot had fallen asleep. Like, oh and I had to drag my dead log of a leg. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny but then in the background i just hear i hear the photographers saying and shout out to the one photographer who was like yeah I'll slay yes! um but when i can hear one of them being like who is she who is she? and then i heard enrique's voice going that's mandy woodruff santo she's with brown ambition <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> you better <And> you better <laughs> hype her up so cute um, oh that's yeah awesome. it was it was fun and and you know everyone i i was like brown ambition yes brown ambition yes this is our podcast yes. for best business podcast uh, i was That's repping amazing. us yeah it was okay. so fun and then we went to the after party oh yeah i was doing it doing you like we don't have the baby we about to no husband went home early he had an early day the next day so it was me and tanya me and tanya went to went to the after party quest love okay. was on the what do you say the ones yes. and twos i don't know if they call them that anymore <laughs> <laughs> i call them that he, was playing, he played some music for us <laughs> and it was uh, uh, it was so fun. It was a uh, it felt good to feel free. And then the yes. week of anxiety afterward, like <laughs> is that COVID? <laughs> is it the Rona? No, you're just hungover because you were out till three a.m. Um, but it was it'll you know those moments. I feel like who knows if it'll happen again. Um, yeah. So it was fun. I would have been so much more fun if you were there. But I'm glad Aww. that we were both on our little adventures. Exactly. It sounds like an amazing time. Yeah. Yeah. And what did you come home to? What's happening in this crazy, crazy <laughs> world that we live in? Um, well, you know, I mean, obviously, like, recession. Um, I've seen mm. all these layoffs. And mm -hmm. I I mean, if y'all know that I had to do my own set of layoffs, um, we were fortunate in that during the height of the pandemic, not only did we not have to lay people off, we actually gave people raises. Um, if you're not familiar, so... The main two companies I have are the Budget Nista, which is basically the business of Tiffany. So that's like me speaking, teaching books, spokesperson work, and then my online school, the Literature Academy. And collectively, those two companies at their peak maybe had 20 to 25 employees. Um, and well, I'm using the words employees loosely, maybe like 17 employees and then the rest contractors. But we treated our contractors just as well as we treated our employees. So we just considered everybody like, you know, family. And so, um, so during, like I said, pandemic, people were losing their jobs, not us. Thankfully, we were already like a digital company. So um, we did make some transition shifts to make it easier for people to work at home, especially the moms. We were like, okay, this is when drop off is, this is when pickups are, we're not going to have meetings during those times. Um, anyone who knows who's worked with me before, like we gave, we set aside, we had a bonus pool. So 5% of our net profit, so profit after expenses, we set aside for the, um, the team. So during 2020, we had a huge, like really great strong year. And so the average bonus was like, um, $5,000 people were making, some people made, um, uh, five figure bonuses, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, things were all good. We've never been late on a payment. Um, you know, we go on vacation every year where we pay for everything. We fly everybody out, no matter where you live, as long as it's in the U.S. And I really try to create like a loving, caring environment because one of my goals was not just to serve as many black women and brown women, women externally, but was to also create an amazing envir environment internally. And so I think I would say, because I'm not just saying that, but that we did a good job of that, but I... I know only because we had just done a survey about a year ago, like, how am I doing as a leader? And across the board, it was like, and these are anonymous surveys. So I set that mm -hmm. up to say that um, after Jarrell passed away, I just, I couldn't even pick my head up. You know, like, it was, there, there were some holes that I realized in my own leadership. Like, I had not thought about, you know how you create an estate plan for your personal life? Mm -hmm. I did not have an estate plan for the business because you, you didn't think about that. So what happens when I cannot physically be here and do? And as a result, it kind of went haywire. And so we had I had people making choices on my behalf that were not the best choices for like the company. So literally, Gerard was in the hospital and I had just found out that he wasn't probably going to make it, although he was his body was physically there and I had to have a team meeting because it was a shit show. And I was like, I don't even... I can't wow. say both. 
Like, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just so overwhelming, but I wanted to, I remember I was like, look, whatever decisions have been made are voided. I don't even know, I don't know what's going on, but everything is voided. I will not make any choices until, this is maybe in November when I said this, I said until after February. I promise you everything will stay the same because I asked the finance, like our CFO, do we have enough money to last us until February? And she said, yes. And I said, fine, I won't make any choices until then. Just try not to destroy everything. Like, damn, I just need a moment, you know? And it was just mm. so hard, but I was like, I can't, I can't be Tiffany the Budget Nista right now. You know, like, so I, I made that promise and sure enough, you know, everybody was able to stay. But I, I did say things are going to shift. I don't know in what way because I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. And to be all the way transparent, although this is not good business and please do not do this, but the Literature Academy paid me, but I was the lowest paid person on like the main team. I only got paid um after like I got an owner's draw after every single thing was paid, all the savings was saved. And if there was no excess after myself and my business partner did not take a draw, you know, I want to say the literature Academy paid me like $54,000 a year. I mean, we had people making well into the six figures. So of the lead team, I was making the less by a lot, you know, like the less by half. But I said, that's okay. Because when we have a really good month and my owner's draw can overcompensate for that. And then we don't have a good month, then I don't deserve to make anything. And then the budget Nista, it was worse um, that with the budget Nista, I had not gotten paid any money in, I want to say five or six years. I'm talking about owner's draw. I'm talking about even payroll. It was to the point where my accountant was like, you're going to get audited, Tiffany, please don't audit me. Because having a business that doesn't pay you looks like you have some sort of like drug, drug, you know, yeah, like money laundering. You know, but <laughs> the reason why I didn't yeah. take a salary from the budget Nista, even though the budget Nista was Tiffany speaking. Tiffany writing books, Tiffany doing spokesperson work. Like it was literally the business of Tiffany is because I wanted so badly to pay my ladies well. You know, I know what it was like out there. And the truth of the matter is, you know, I mean, y'all know me and Mandra, we're not, I'm not a big spender. So with what I did have, I learned to invest and save. So I was still able to grow wealth despite not taking, maybe taking one tenth of what maybe a normal CEO would have taken from their business. So one business didn't pay me at all, even though it was, you know, me. And then the other business paid me significantly less. But even through that, I was still able to grow, you know, my net worth to seven figures. So that's why I never felt I didn't do this to be a martyr. I, I did it because I said, Tiffany, you, you still have more than you ever even imagined, you know? So all of that to say, I really tried hard to be a really good boss. And then Jarrell passes away and I just fall apart. I just literally, I didn't even want to be here. I, I was just like, it was the hardest. I mean, I mean, anybody who's lost anybody that they're close to, you know. And so after February happened, we didn't really have the funds. You know, one, the budget needs to... Certainly, I didn't know what the future held because I was like, I cannot do all that. I I used to work like all the time. I cannot continue to work at that pace anymore. So as a result, we're not going to make what we used to make, you know, in order to support everybody. And then with the Literature Academy, you know, I I had stepped down as CEO and I knew that as a result... He was going to take Tamara, our new CEO, who was, she was there the day I opened the academy door. Tamara has been there. So she's not somebody new, but I knew it was going to take her time to get her sea legs as a CEO. So we would see a drop in income. So as a result, we had to let some folks go, Um, you know, and not a little bit, like, you know, probably about half the team. And it wasn't done easily. And um, I was not in a space to have those conversations because, you know, you have to talk for a while. But I said, when I get back from Bali, maybe I'll be in a space to call everybody, which is where I am now. And just to kind of come back to the reaction that from some of the folks that we've had to let go, um, it's really, some of it was kind of nasty. And I was like, folks who, you know, that, I mean, all the bonuses, the raises, a year didn't go by. Sometimes you would get a raise, it would be 40%. We would double your income, all of the trips, all of the, I mean, I, I don't think I make a good CEO because quite honestly, I'm not firm enough. People would, would be building their own businesses and I would support it. I would help them. We would use our platform. Things that we would charge 50 to a hundred thousand dollars, our email, Twitter, social media, where we would do this thing called um, Unicorn Spotlight, because I called my team the Unicorn Squad, where I would place you on our on our 
all of our platforms and promote your business. And people would get tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business as a result. These are people on my team. So all of that. And then to the point where some people were growing so much that they weren't even doing their job. Like it would be like they're not present anymore, you know, even though they were getting like my employees by 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 last year, the year before, you know, not only did you get your full time salary, we also were able to give um, insurance, 401k plan, a matching program, all of that. And so because my husband passes away and I can't dance for you anymore, there's this like visceral backlash that makes me say like, I don't know, like not, I don't regret the, the doing because I believe that that's the right thing to do. But it's just like, I see why people don't want to do stuff, don't want to do stuff, you know, because I'm just like, I, there's no grace and space for that. Literally, there are people on the team I'd never heard from, Mandy. There are people like, your dog couldn't pass away without me sending you flowers. You know, like if you were getting married, we would we would get something for your wedding. I mean, we would have baby showers for people. And there are people who I knew I should have fired sooner rather than later because they weren't doing the work. They weren't in slack. They were so busy working on their own businesses. They couldn't be here. That like we didn't let them go. Conversation after conversation, years of that, of me like kind of turning the other cheek and saying, well, what can we do? Can we work around your schedule? And to say like, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, in order, like, I can't, I can't do all the things I used to do before that supported everybody. It was like, I thought we were family, you know, like, um, I sacrificed for you. And I'm just like, well, and I appreciate that. And I sacrificed for you as well. I I guess it's just like, what? I don't know. It's just so hard because I'm just like, cause I, I'm trying to take grace and space to say, I know how hard it must be to lose your job. But I'm mm -hmm. also like, damn, I don't get any grace and space. Like I'm not out here I didn't let you go because I don't feel like it. Like my husband died. Like, what does it take? Do I have to die for you to be like, well, now maybe I can understand why Tiffany couldn't keep me. Like, what does it take? Honestly. But you know what it did teach me is that the people who that was their reaction. I said, I thought maybe, maybe I had made a mistake for certain people, but I'm like, you know what? I didn't. I didn't. Because if that is how you treat someone who has poured into you and at my lowest and worst moment when I've never not shown up for you, then quite honestly, you know, you deserve to be gone. There are literally people who did not have the skill set, did not have the education. We had grown beyond the skills that they brought to the table, but we kept them anyway and found positions and continue to pay and continue to give raises, you know, but you know what? That's really my fault. That's why I said Tam is going to make a best, much better leader than I am as a CEO because I I'm too soft, you know, and I, you know, I should have, I thought I was being kind, but it, I wasn't. That clear is kind. And I should have been clear and stood up for um, the boundaries that I'm now not, I don't do those things anymore. And, you know, like I said, it's just like some of that feedback, I'm just reading like some of the emails that I've received and I'm just like, wow, Darrell ain't been dead five months since you've been here for years taking advantage. He ain't been dead five months. And that's how you speak to me. These are people literally that I have sent so much business to. And if I go on their websites and stuff, guess who? Guess whose logo is on there as this is who I work with? You know what I mean? I'm like, you still eating off budget needs to plate. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Like, people have to be careful because it's not the same Tiffany as before. That you can keep my logo because you did work here on your website. You can let my name slip from your lips. But be careful because if someone comes and says, I'd like a recommendation, or do you think that I ought to work with them? I'm going to be fully honest about, you know, the experience I've had. So feel free to use me, but also know that people behind the scenes reach out to me to ask, you know, how is it working with this person? And I don't believe in like, I'm not retaliating in any way. If you were great, because there are a handful of people that were honestly really great, and we just had to let them go because we just didn't have the bandwidth anymore. There are definitely people who are like that, who I'm just like, sis, I got you, you know, but there are some people that know that they did not show up, you know, that they left us high and dry. And then, you know, they followed it up with nastiness. People who I didn't even hear from who like, you know, Jarrell passed away and not a peep, except for when it was time to be like, sis, unfortunately, we don't have that role anymore. Well, um, what about my money? I'm like, wow. So I don't know, girl, it's just, 
honestly, just makes you just want to like throw the blanket over your head. I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but I'm just like, it just really like, I'm not going to lie. It really hurt my feelings. And I just was just like, <sighs> yeah, it was like, do, what did I do wrong? You know, like, I don't even know. But yeah, so I mean, if you're listening to this, you should used to work for me. Um, you know, hey, sis, hope all is well. <laughs> you're doing a lot of talking. I'm doing a lot of listening. Yeah, and thank you, man. And what I'm hearing is, first of all, the fact that you contacted them after to reach out, to extend a hand and to to check in with them um, when you were ready. You know, that's a lot. That's so much more than many CEOs do. I mean, speaking of layoffs right now, I mean, we're seeing, you know, dozens at Netflix were recently laid off. Klarna, which is like one of those buy now, pay later apps that was really huge, just let 700 people, 10% of its global workforce off with a pre-recorded video message. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, they're not going to get a call from the CEO to say, how you doing? Yeah. Um, it was really compassionate of you to to extend that. I also want to, as a friend, I just want to like protect you because I'm like, part of me is like, don't put yourself like that's really vulnerable at a time when I feel like you don't need to be vulnerable in that way. Like open yourself up to that kind of um, to that kind of reaction, that kind of negativity. I'm not surprised that you encountered it only only because you know humans are humans and they are grieving and they and they haven't had a place to maybe put that grief or they don't have you just never know what people's um what people's own coping mechanisms are if they or if they even have any mm -hmm. or if they've ever suffered a loss like that or dealt with job loss and i think with us we have the perspective of you know, the greater perspective of there'll be other opportunities. I mean, I talked about this when you first initially were so candid and honest about, you know, the layoffs at Live Richer Academy, just mm -hmm. about the overall picture that they got to work for an incredible company with a black female CEO and what a privilege that is. And the you know, and, and like you just laid out, you know, all of those things. But sometimes if they're so, if they're so steeped in that fear, resentment, grief of their own, they can't see all that yet. You yeah. know, I feel like in a year they'll have some clarity and having been fired and laid off myself, I can like, you know, there's just stuff that they need to work on individually that has nothing to do with you. And I think just as a friend, I'm just like, no, Tip, don't put yourself there. You well, know, because I guess it. I just I want to like, you know, because I, I also do want to be better. So I'm just like, you know, here's what I probably mm -hmm. could have done differently. I mean, I, I couldn't have been in a better emotional state because I don't think I could have done about that. But maybe... You know, like I'm sure people would have wanted me to be the one to lay them off. I just was not in that space to like, you know, I, I wasn't like, yeah. you know, like it was either Tamara, you know, so somebody who they'd known, but it's just, you know, so I just don't know what I could have done differently because it's just like, do we all sink? Do we just destroy the company? I just, you know, I just, but to your point, everyone is allowed to grieve because they're grieving as well. You know, and it's not everybody. Honestly, there were people who did a great job and I just felt really bad that we had to let them go just because it just wasn't the position we had or could afford anymore. So there are certainly people who it wasn't anything they did. It was just, this is where we are now. Um, but yeah, it yeah. just, like, honestly, it just, I don't want to be in that position anymore. Um, I, it just made me realize that I made the right decision because it's me, Rose, and Logan over at Budgetista. And when I tell you, but also to the lesson, you know, this is just for anyone listening. This is like something, even a lesson that I'm going to be sharing with my mentees soon is that there are some people on the team that if I'm being all the way candid, I said, no matter what, keep them. It's because they did what I call illustrate your Oprah. So I mean, I don't know if this is still true, but like, let's just say Oprah said, you know, hey, Mandy, Tiffany, you know, we for $10,000, you know, I'm going to connect you with all of my business connections. You know, I'm going to help you, you know, um, showcase Mandy, your new book, Tiffany, your whatever that is. Me and Mandy would come up with that $10,000 because Oprah, we see her value so clearly that we know that $10,000 investment is going to yield way more back. And that's what I call illustrating your Oprah, like so clearly illustrating how valuable you are. And there are people on the team that I was like, I don't know what we're going to have you do when it all shakes out, but 
The value you bring is so compellingly obvious that I need you to still be here. And so it's a lesson in that when you bring excellence to the table, a space is always made for you. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes that company really just doesn't have the money, but let's just say you were so amazing. I mean, you don't, the people I know in this industry, the, and even outside of this industry, a phone call is easily made to place you someplace else easily because the value you've brought is so strong that either I will find the money to keep you or I will find a place for you because I know what you bring to the table. And there are people who, what phone call? Why would I make that phone call? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people to go through the same thing that I went through. And so that also is a lesson is that do you truly bring excellence to the table or you just have been like eating luxuriously? And some people have, and I allowed it. If I'm being all the way honest, I allowed it. But then when the going gets tough, you get to see we have to cut the fat. And it's just like, wait, me? Yes. Because you didn't bring value to the table in a way that would allow me to keep you or in a way that allow me to place you someplace else. Because I, like I said, I know people who have huge businesses, huge platforms that are looking for a certain talent that there are only a handful of people that I'd be like, I would send somebody there. So I think that's just a lesson too. It's like when I said I came back to like all those contracts, you know, I didn't know what I was going to come back to. I thought maybe the budgetista is done, you know, and everybody who wanted to work with me last year, I was like, honestly, I don't have it. I don't know when I'm going to come back, but I just, and 95% of them said, I'll wait. And they did wait. And I was able to extend the contract later and keep the business going. And so I think that's a testament to illustrating your Oprah. So for those of you who are maybe experiencing job loss, you know, continue to illustrate your Oprah and a space will be made. If not at that company, somebody else like, look at Mandy. She went from like, what? How dare you let me go to the hottest chick in the game wearing her own chain? No, we please. Edit Mandy, that out because we don't in talk one about year, ally. don't even do it. Don't <laughs> let Mandy be getting my nerves with that. In one year, girl, Mandy is literally six years ahead of, of ahead of schedule. She might not see it, but I see it as somebody who grew from scratch, like she's grown from scratch. She is six years ahead of schedule because her her Mandy brings excellence to the table. She illustrates her value so clearly. Look how far ahead she's been able to leap in one year. So even if a a space is not helpful for you, you'll be able to make a space for yourself. And so Mandy can always bank on herself because of the excellence that she consistently brings to the table. And so nobody can't take that away from you. So I, you know, if you work for me and I wasn't able to keep you and you're excellent, you will find someplace else that will be, you know, you'll be able to say, like there's one woman in particular, she's excellent. She asked me, could I write her a letter of recommendation? I sure did. She already has a new job. Because she was excellent. It's just that that wasn't a role that we could fill anymore. So, yeah. So if you it haven't heard from me. Back. Go ahead. Look. I was no, going to say the shady ahead. part of me wants to be like, so if you haven't heard from me, there's a reason. For those who have, I'm sorry, sis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, also, like, you're going to be a much. The, 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 the reality of being in business is that these things happen. And yeah. I don't think for a second anyone should kid themselves, whether I mean, even Tiffany, you have this huge heart, you want to help everybody at the end of the day, it's a business. Yeah. And so you made a business decision that inconvenienced a lot of people that yeah. happens. And that's why and especially what you're saying now about the people on your team that you want to go to bat for and help them find their next opportunity. This is why, as individuals, we have to be so laser focused on our brand, our professional yes. brand, yes. our skill sets, like you said, our excellence, and how are we how are we, you know, growing? How are we developing so that we can be the person that people want on their teams that they mm-hmm. and so you have unlimited opportunities always. Yes. And that's why I have been able to go into business fearlessly, because it's like you said, like there's those skills that I know I can fall back on and mm-hmm. oper- and good, good, you know, no burned bridges that I can think mm-hmm. of. Um, maybe a couple a little like, d- with dents <laughs> yeah. in it. Maybe with dents. Maybe they're on like stilts <laughs> held together with popsicle sticks, but there's still a bridge. I can yes. get across it. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, that's just the message. I mean, whether you are and also for for people who are running businesses and making those tough decisions at the end of the day, like what you said, clear being clear is kindness. Mm -hmm. Is that I mean, that is just and it brings me back to like, you know, if you haven't read this book called Dare to Lead by Brene Brown, I Mm -hmm. love, love, love all of her messages around leadership and being clear is terrifying. And I know we've talked like Tiff, you've talked about your struggle with having those difficult conversations Mm -hmm. and how, you know, you're continuing to work on that. But this experience 
I mean, not that I ever want to say, of course, we would all want Jarrell back a, a million times over versus this, but you know, the growth as a business owner, this 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 growth that um that we're all getting to witness, you're in the middle of it, you're gonna yeah. be a more a, a so much better. And you're open to learning, you're open to saying, here's what I would do differently. Mm -hmm. And that I think is what separates great leaders. And you may say, never again, no CEO <laughs> ever again. But you won't, that's not your last great business. I mean, I just come on. You're Tiffany, yeah. like <laughs> you will create and it'll be better and better next time and next time and next time. And I'm just um, grateful because I, I honestly, I my I have my next therapy appointment with Dr. Green tomorrow. So I'm going to share and just be like, well, because one of the things that Dr. Green tries to work on with me is how, like, because I used to always tell, I'm self-aware. She said, no. She's like, Tiffany, sometimes we think that we're self-aware, but we're more self-deprecating. She's like that true humility is taking up the exact amount of space, Tiffany, that not overreaching to arrogance, but not undershooting to self-deprecation. And I'm like, okay, because sometimes we think humility and like, okay, I'm trying to be humble, I'm trying to be kind, means that like we take we take a, a step all the way back. And she's like, no, it's taking up the exact amount of space. So in this moment, I mean, I know I'm angry or whatever, but honestly, really the anger is just spent, it's just, it's just um. It's really just me. I'm just sad, honestly. You know, like I'm sad. And so I just, I want to get a better framework of like, where could I have done better? But also what not to pick up? Because I know that I have a tendency to be like, I should have done this. I should have done this. I can understand that. And not to give myself my own grace and space to be like, well, yes, yes. That's maybe those things say. are true, Tiffany. You give yourself the grace you deserve. Don't you know? expect everyone else to give it to you. Yeah, I think that's so got to come from you. Yeah, no, 100%. I believe so. Because you're right. If I'm waiting on other people, then like I might not it doesn't ever matter come. what It's none of your business what they think about you. That's Tabitha yeah. Brown in my head all the time. None of my business. Yeah. You give yourself that grace because you have to know. You have to know who you are at your core and your intentions yeah. and make peace with that and understand that some people will feel however they're going to feel about it. But that's not your business. You can't change yeah. it. It's too ex you have too much to do. You have too much healing to do. <laughs> I know. I'm just We're like, I know Dr. Green is going to be like, really, Tiffany? Like, I'm like, I this. thank goodness for her. <laughs> I know. It's going to be a good week. She better book two She's going to be like, I know <laughs> that like with all the, like, like the grieving exercise that we had, that that's not what you're putting on your plate. And I'm like, I know, but because really what I'm saying is I hate mm -hmm. that people are mad at me and I don't want them to be upset with me. And I feel really bad because yeah. I care about them because I do, you know, but yeah, to your point, I know. Yeah. I know, but you were always going to piss them off, Tiff. You were always going to piss them off when they lost their jobs. Yeah. There was a, not a world in which they weren't going to be upset about that, you know, and I think that's what it is. It's about letting, but it's what needed to be done for where you were at that stage in the business. Maybe in a perfect world, you would have had a successor or systems in place or yeah. more savings or whatever, but yeah. that was the reality, you know, yeah. and you did the best with what you could and often making the best choice for ourselves does mean inconveniencing and hurting other people you know you're the best mandy honestly you're like such a good friend <laughs> <laughs> you are know. for real thanks tiff it goes no, both for real, i appreciate that yeah i'm about to try to cry just... every day of episode <laughs> i do really appreciate that because tiff, you showed up what did i say i don't need i don't expect anything you showed up you sit and if you want to stare at me for an hour we can do that <laughs> <laughs> um, no, for real. I appreciate that. You have no idea because I was really just like, dang, Tiffany, you should have done more. You could have been better. And it's just like the yeah. other part of me was like, Tiffany, the hell? Like, when do you get to grieve? When do you get to not carry everybody's burden? Like, so would you, were you supposed to keep them for the rest of their lives when they're 90 years old? Like, what was the scenario mm -hmm. going to be like? And so like, no, I just appreciate that. Like, I know Dr. Green is going to read me gently for filth like, girl, stop. <laughs> Which I, I just need. don't want you to be angry either at them because I feel like yeah. they're having human reactions. You're we're You're all right. just freaking humans. You're right. And I love. I know I keep talking about Bre Brene Brown because I'm kind of a basic bitch like that, but I love <laughs> Brene Brown. She has this podcast called Dare to Lead, named after her book and her her leadership um, training that she does. And this most recent episode made me think of you because mm. Brene Brown is stepping down as CEO of really? her business. Um, okay. Yes. And she talks about it. And the things that she was talking about reminded me of you. Okay. And 
the compassion that she's having for herself and her sister. She's named two co-CEOs in her place. So it took two CEOs to do what she was doing. Yeah, I have to listen to it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a recent episode where they talk about and what I also love that stuck with me from this conversation. So for those of you who don't know, Brene Brown has this her tick her TikTok, (laughs) her TED talk (laughs) went viral. Uh, yes. years ago about vulnerability and shame. So she's a social worker who's a shame expert and has taken her message around being vulnerable and um, dealing with shame and uses it to create better leadership, braver leadership, more inclusive um, companies, all of that. So she's built this big business with you know dozens of employees and they have facilitators doing these trainings around the globe, you know? Mm. Um, so it's a big company that she's built. And, you know, from someone who is a social worker, Mm. you know, as a preschool teacher, I feel like that's part social worker in a way. And she in the show opens up about bringing her, they bring everyone back to their headquarters for an all hands after the pandemic. And she's like, and one of the things that I love that she talks about is how in, in her all hands, she specifically said, we need to reintroduce ourselves to one another. None of us is the Mm. same. We've all we we are different. Yeah. We let's not it's not business as usual. We are yeah. fundamentally different. The pain, the grief, the suffering yeah. that we've gone through, you know, and what is what do we look like now? To, and, and, and how do we show up to work now? And she's taking she also announced she's taking a 14 week sabbatical. Like, okay. let step down as CEO, taking 14 weeks off because that's the level of burnout that she's mm. gotten to. And. Uh, giving her employees four weeks paid vacation off this summer as well. Okay. And just to acknowledge, she's like, this is the bravest thing we've ever done, which is to step away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And anyway, I think that that's that reminded me of you, too, because I do think that there are CEOs out there who get to that sp- or end up there and it all feels right. And then you realize, OK, this is actually not what I need or for me. And then that yeah. inconveniences and hurts some people maybe, but what's the alternative? Yeah. To but stay just, here and to like to drown. Push yourself into the ground. Like yeah. a Cause, bug but you're under right. your you shoe. Said something no. That really like helped. It was like for me not to be angry with them because everyone's, everyone is feeling yeah. like their feelings are valid. You know, it's not, it wasn't, I'm not the only one who lost something. They lost something too. You know, there's mm-hmm. a level of grief that folks who are not at a place where I'm assuming they love to work and love the people that they worked with, like to lose that, that is a that is a great loss as well. You know, and there's a grieving process for that as well. So to leave, I can't ask for grace and space and not also extend it. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like protecting your heart too. And, and I do think it was like incredibly generous of you to talk to them and give them a space to let go of some of that anger if mm-hmm. they wanted to. But it's just like, so what do you, don't internalize it. Don't let it stay yeah. there in you. Uh, it's almost like, not compart- not like a psychopath, you know, you have to, you feel things. And plus you're an empath. We've talked about that before. Yeah. But not letting it sit with you on your spirit, just kind of like looking at it as something that's floating past you. You know, mm-hmm. this is anger. I understand it. Okay. It's it's gone now. It's in the world. It's theirs to carry, not me. Yeah. Um, Dr. Green, I set her up for you. Girl. So she'll be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Green, well, and then maybe says she's going to be like, mm, that's good. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I will send you the podcast episode, Dare to Lead, by my girl, Brene Brown. Yes, also, please. I'm reading a new book called Burnout. Um, have you ever okay. heard of this book? No. It's not anything like you think a book called Burnout would be like. It's about our emotions okay. and how it's it's like the tools that we can use to actually move through an emotion so we okay. don't get to the place of burnout and how okay. burnout, especially from people who were in like service industries and service like medical professionals and teachers and things like that, mm-hmm. how sometimes it's because the the day-to-day chronic stress of those jobs and those and and also being a parent the chronic stress of that how we end up to a place where we're spiraling where not 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 all the self-care in the world can save us because it's like Mm -hmm. the the chronic nature of it the day after day after day and Mm -hmm. not like sitting with and acknowledging those feelings and emotions so it's really a book about emotions and how to like move through them so that you don't end up in that space of deep 
burnout where you're just Mm. nothing I do is working. I'm Mm. not being effective. You know, I, you know, um, it's a really, I'm, I'm looking forward to finishing this book, but no, send, send me that too. Cause I, you know, I, these days I have a lot of time to read. Um, so, yeah. and I, but no, I would love that because you're right. I want to get to a space where like those things flow through and I can acknowledge like one of the things Dr. Green always reminds me is two things can be true. I can say this is the mm. best that I had, but I can also acknowledge it's still hurtful on the other side. And that's true as well. Just because yep. this is just because my intention was not to hurt doesn't mean people didn't feel hurt. You know, Mm -hmm. so it's like two things can be true at one time, you know, and so like just acknowledging that like, okay, like people are allowed to feel that. I don't have to internalize it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can say, okay, yes, it would not have been ideal. And I obviously I would love for Jarrell to be here. I would continue to be the regular Tiffany I was before. Um, But that's not where we are. So, no, this was honestly, this was because I was debating whether how much to share and how much to be transparent and. You know, I'm certain, like I said, like I know some of my current employees and and and, and past employees have, um, you know, listened to the podcast. But honestly, the truth is, it's nothing that I have not either shared. Well, there are a handful of people who I have not called because honestly, they did nothing. Like, you know, they we needed to fire them some time ago. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, they were fortunate to be able to ride the wave for as long as they did. And they know. And they may mean they don't know. Well, girl, you're going to hear from me. You know now. Um, but... <laughs> You know, for those people who like, you know, I really reached out to because I'm just like, dang, you know, I wish things could be different. I, you know, it's a learning lesson and you're right. Maybe one day, but for now, child, it's a lot. Like I, and I'm hoping I'm sharing this and being as transparent because most people in business, they will share either their wins or their semi losses, not like this, this huge, like, I don't even want to call it loss, but challenge. And I just wanted this for you to see, this is also part of leadership. That like, you're not going to make all the right choices. There are going to be people who are going to be really upset because they're like, I was using that money to, to fund my college fund for my kid. Or, you know, it's not, I don't take it lightly, like someone losing that income. And so these are things that you're just like, I, but I don't know what else I could have done. But, you know, I I just want you to see that sometimes there is no... There is no right answer. There's just learning. And this is what part of like entrepreneurship looks like that, like, you know, for those who get to a point where they can hire people, you know? Yeah. I love that so much. I'd like to end on that note, like to give yourself space to not actually have some magical epiphany. Like it just sucks. Yes. Everything sucks. Mm -hmm. Jarrell's gone. That sucks. Yes. You know, those people lost their jobs. That sucks. Period. That sucks. You know? Yes. And you just need more time to work through it. Yeah. Yeah. For all both sides. Hey, BA fam. If you're to Squarespace, if you haven't, listen up. Squarespace is everything if you need to sell anything. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to help your products look their best online. Plus, you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. That's right. When I launched Mandy Moneymakers, my group coaching program, I use Squarespace's members only areas to do that. And it has been such an easy tool to use. You own all the content you put on Squarespace's platform, which we know we're always harping on about how important it is to own your IP. With Squarespace, that's possible. They also offer one click data portability. Head to squarespace.com slash brown ambition for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code BROWNAMBITION to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash BROWNAMBITION, offer code BROWNAMBITION. Brown Ambition supported by Constant Contact, a digital marketing platform that helps small businesses and nonprofits of all sizes build, grow, and succeed. With email marketing, contact management, industry-leading list growth tools, social media ads, and more, Constant Contact helps small businesses connect with customers, find new ones, and sell online, all from one easy-to-use platform. They've been trusted by millions of businesses to help improve their marketing. With a 97% deliverability rate, you can rest assured that your customers and potential customers are getting the right message at the right time. 
With a simple interface, Constant Contact's easy-to-use platform makes contact management easier than ever. Their list growth tools help you find a bigger audience fast. Lead generation, landing pages, text to join, and social media ads are proven to grow your list and drive engagement with your brand. Plus, they've got thousands of integrations, so you can sync Constant Contact's tools with the tools you're already using. Powerful automation tools help you send the right message to the right person at the right time every time. To start your free digital marketing trial today, visit constantcontact.com. All right, we are back. It's time for a boost and break. Wait, I didn't think, wait, I didn't, I didn't give Tiff her opportunity to sing. <laughs> and now okay. it's time to boost or break or boost or break. Are you going to boost? <clears throat> are you going to break? <clears throat> what you going to do? What you going to do? I don't remember the song ever. So <laughs> you go. You're going to boost, you're going to break. <laughs> I'm going to take a break. <laughs> it's okay. hard to pick a break these days. Um, well, first, I don't think we've had time to acknowledge the horrific shooting in Buffalo yeah. um, last weekend. And part of partially part of that is we didn't record um, a show last week. Um, but also, I, I, I'm i speaking of giving yourself grace. I was giving myself time to just process. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's been sitting on my spirit. So my heart goes out to them. Um, I did find it healing to get together with my neighborhood. We had a little like a candlelight vigil oh, just in the nice. yeah. middle of our neighborhood. And um, I did find that, you know, something because there's what can, there's nothing you can do, but just yeah. love each other and um, support one another. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> on top of that, there was some shenanigans in the news and a couple of things I was toggling between. Should we talk about Walmart's Juneteenth red velvet flavored ice cream? I saw that. Or could we talk about <laughs> Wells Fargo again, proving they are the worst, the worst, the worst. There was this crazy article about in the Times about how people at Wells Fargo whistleblowers have come out and said that they held fake, basically fake interviews with diverse candidates just to just in case they were ever audited. They were sort of worried. Oh, that. maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, for many open positions, employees would interview a quote unquote diverse candidate. This article says the bank's term for a woman or a person of color in keeping with an informal policy. And then these people noticed that they would be interviewed for a job that had already been promised to something to someone mm. else. And when this whistleblower spoke out, shout out to Mr. Bruno, who was fired. Um, and he says that Wells Fargo did fired him in retaliation because he was going around saying these fake interviews are inappropriate, morally wrong, et cetera. Yes. But he wasn't the only one. They had like half a dozen former Wells Fargo's Wells Fargo employees who verified that this was happening. And what a waste of everyone's time. This I just, is. <laughs> I'm just like, how can you get any like the fact that the city of New York said we're not doing no more business with y'all because of these pot like I just like. Is there like literally, do you wake up and say, how can we be as as terrible as possible? How can we be as, hmm, what can mm. we do? <laughs> like, I just, honestly, but that's why we moved over. We left, you know, the Fargo and not to say that like any other bank is like so great, but I'm like, damn, like, yeah. you know, big banks are not my fave at all. But, you know, once you have a certain size business, it's hard to do like the, the smaller banks just because there's certain things that you just need, you know? And so, yeah. but yeah, we were with them for years and just every time you turn around, you're just like the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst. Wells Fargo is actually my first, because before it was Wells Fargo, it was called like Wachovia. Before Wachovia it was called something else. And so I was I with the Wachovia. bank before the bank before the bank. Like it was my first bank account. I forget what it was called. Like the actual, like first, whatever the bank was called before. And then it became yeah. like something else. Then it became Wachovia, then it became Wells Fargo. But I was with that bank four banks back. So this was like, you know, my very first bank account. And I'm like, sis, y'all are mm. just, even though I have like 20,000 bank accounts and it took like so long to switch everything over. I said, yeah, I can't, pain. I can't. They have just continued to show their ass. I just don't see how anyone, any people of color could bank with this place. Like they're the same bank where the CEO basically said, we'd love to have more diverse candidates, but it's hard to find qualified black candidates. Remember can that from like June 2020? My God. And then last August, they paid $8 million to settle a Department of Labor claim that it discriminated against more than 30,000 black job applicants for positions. Um, 
settled a case in 2017, $36 million class action lawsuit, um, again, for not advancing black financial advisors and financial advisor trainees at the company. Like, bad, 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 They're going to watch. Bad, They're going to just rename bad themselves. Bad news bears. They're going to rename themselves. Bad news bears. They need, they need to just burn it down, I guess. I mean, not literally, but just start from scratch. Like, can we just overhaul everything? Um, but yeah, that got my blood going this 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 past week. That and Walmart's red velvet freaking flavor Juneteenth <laughs> ice cream, because why not make a mockery of a holiday we fought just, so hard to have? I <laughs> mean, <laughs> if, if, what if honestly, that could have been worse if it had been like watermelon flavored or yes, it was like the Juneteenth fried chicken or something like that. I know. But God, who the hell I was know. in marketing? That's why I just want to put are there, are there no black people there? It's like when she, like Chevy what had the no were and they were like, the, yeah. No, no, I don't know. I want to think that there weren't, but I don't know. It's just yeah. how, or maybe they uh, weren't listening because sometimes people are like, "No, people are gonna love it." But <laughs> uh, well, I am going to boost. Well, hmm, I don't even know how to say. It. I'll just say this: that so when I went to Jordan, I didn't know at first, but like, so my friend Cabral was like, "Oh, my friend Marion is going to Jordan. Marion is a flight attendant," and I was like, "Oh," and so. You know, I didn't realize, but the person who was um, who was hosting the trip, the tour, he himself was a flight attendant. And so 90% of the people who were on this tour, maybe like 20 or so people, no, oh, maybe like 15, they were all flight attendants. So 90%, there was maybe like just a handful of us that weren't, like three or four. So they all knew each other. You know, I was like, oh, they all flew with the United. And I was like, okay. So it was so interesting how different the conversation is with people who travel. You know, it was, and it just set a tone for me that said that, because on the outside, if you didn't know what they did for a living, you would have thought because of the type of conversations that everybody was independently wealthy. Because the conversation, for example, went something like this. Oh, you know, I really want to get, um, uh, you know, braces or something like my, my veneers or whatever it is. You know what? Go to my guy in Vietnam. He's amazing. You know, I just feel like I'm like I'm getting a little older. I'm getting sunspots. Oh, I've got the the best guy. He's in India. Literally, people had a skin person in India. They're a <laughs> dentist in Vietnam. They're a doctor in Colombia. So it they sounded like these independent, very wealthy, posh people. And not to say that you know, as flight attendants, you don't make good money, but you know, that's a like a, a good regular person job. You know, and it just had it just kind of like a light bulb went on in me. Is that oftentimes we say we can't have a certain lifestyle because we're because honestly our thinking is limited if you're someone who's like i would really love to travel the world you honestly don't have to necessarily wait until you're this millionaire that there are alternative careers that allow you to do that you know and so because they were telling me like for example you know like maybe my my flight was like you know twelve hundred dollars round trip to to jordan but because they're flight attendants and they get discounts or sometimes you just pay if you fly standby maybe you just pay taxes it was like under two hundred dollars for them and so it just made it that much more affordable so it just i just think that you know so many of us get locked into you know it's almost like first comes love then comes marriage then comes a baby the baby carriage and it's like well you know you can actually have a baby whenever you want well, you know, you can actually, you know, there there are so many alternatives to get the end desired goal that you're wanting. So I'm hoping that I say all that to say for you to just expand your mind and ask yourself, what is actually my desired outcome? And am I taking a long road, route? Because maybe there's a shorter route to live that lifestyle that I'm saying that I want. Because when I tell mm -hmm. you, Mandy, like if it took me a couple of days to realize they were all flight attendants, because I was like, wow, these people are wealthy because they were just talking about all their trips. Like, oh, remember that time in Kenya? Oh, girl. And remember this time in Zimbabwe or wherever? And I'm just like, and then I was like, wait, y'all are flight attendants? And then I was like, oh, they, you know, they fly, you know, not for free, but damn near in comparison to what a regular ticket would cost. Um, and yeah, so it was just an amazing trip to meet those amazing people because they were really so awesome, but also to just see life through the eyes of people who see the world regularly and who understand that there's more than one way to achieve that type of lifestyle. So I just encourage people to like, I'm not saying encourage you to be a flight attendant, but I'm encouraging you to figure out what your desired outcome is and ask yourself, are you taking the long route to it? And maybe that there's an easier route where well, you can enjoy it now. You don't have to wait. I think you're also just talking about the importance of human connection and like actually being around people who have who help you see things that are possible yes. that maybe you weren't seeing. And it's like, 
putting yourself in other people's paths so that you come in contact with those types of people. Of course, like putting yourself on a trip in Jordan would put you in the path of people who are adventurous and mm -hmm. willing to try different medical treatments in different countries, it sounds <laughs> yeah. like, which is all great. But I think for anyone, it's like, just get out of your comfort zone, go outside yes. your zip code, go outside of, yes. you know, your immediate circle, because that's where it's, it's really just seeing other people, um, you know, living the life that they're leading and being inspired by that. And like, oh, that's possible for me. I feel yes. like I'm constantly getting to experience that so often just because of the virtue of like the type of work that I do and like mm -hmm. getting to talk with you and everything. And it's really powerful. Yeah. Um, hopefully the show itself is like one of those small ways people sort of um, feel like they can start to think bigger, you know, and start to expect more in a different way. And like you said, going from, they, you, we tell ourselves there's all these rules, but it's not like that at all. Mm -hmm. um, Life's Most of them are self-imposed to... rules, and you're realizing self-imposed. That... Yes, yes. Like, well, I but can't I do can't. this. I got to do this. Who told you to that? Do... Yes, I told myself that. Okay, well, tell yourself something different. <laughs> yes, yes. You know? We get so locked up into like, no, it has to be done this way. It's like, does it? You know. But sometimes Don't you need someone else who's pack doing up it and differently. Move to Thailand because I keep saying I can just do it. <laughs> me and Rio can learn Thai. It'll be fine <laughs> for real. <laughs> Well, welcome back, Tiff. And yeah, that's the show. We will see y'all next week. Don't forget to check in for our BA Q&A on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And don't feel, feel free to tweet me, DM me, maybe give me a different perspective because I really do enjoy hearing from uh, Brown Ambition folk. I'm just the budget needs on all the um, all the platforms. So if you're just I like, girl, you was wrong, girl. You, you want to tweet me? I'm okay with that. <laughs> I might block you. No, I won't block you. Um, but like, <laughs> no, but Look for real, I would just like, you inviting know. more, like inviting more. I know because I'm, you more. know, because I'm always, on, I'm always on a quest <laughs> to like, how can I do and be a better person? Because ultimately, I feel like that's what we're all called to do is to like that. Ultimately, you are here to to the, be the best person that you are capable of being, and so I am committed to always to growth, always, you know, to acknowledging challenges and then growing and then hopefully showing up better and acknowledging some more and then growing and showing up better. So to growing and giving yourself grace. Yes. Growing and grace. Ooh, Cheers. Actually, invisible a champagne. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we love y'all. If you don't, I mean, hello, this is a great episode. If I do say so myself and I do say so myself, um, I... share it with your friends, brownandvisionpodcast.com. So not just this episode, but all the other episodes, you know, I think we're a pretty amazing podcast and the webbies agree. Yeah, two-time um, <laughs> Webby Award winners. <clears throat> no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so share us, share this, hit share on this episode or prior episodes and, you know, put it in the group chat and, you know, just make me make a good group chat conversation and let us know how that goes. So love y'all until Bye. next week. Bye.